What's up, you guys? This is Brittany from She Abundantly at SheAbundantly.com. In the very beginning, the charge that God gave us as mankind is to be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Basically, what that means or what God is telling us is to cause the earth or fill the earth with goodness, with God's goodness. The only way to gain territory is through righteousness. Literally following God's word, following God's law, staying within those boundaries. It's not by lying, stealing, cheating. It's not by killing. It's not by sinning. It's, it's not by any of those means, but it's strictly by righteousness. The only way to gain territory, to fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion, um, uh, yeah, have dominion, all that good stuff in Genesis is through righteousness. And what the devil will try to do is, well, to prevent you from gaining territory so that righteousness can reign in that area, he'll try to intimidate you. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he will try to intimidate you. So here's the thing. When you are operating in sin, disobedience, um, just all evil, he has a legal right to take you out. However that looks, whether it be emotionally, spiritually, physically, I don't know. However that looks, he has a right because you are in his land. His land is sin and disobedience. It's like, think of, you know, the wilderness versus the promised land. Or think of a street versus a sidewalk. As children of God, we are to re remain within the boundaries of, of God's word, which is a sidewalk. Anywhere outside of that, you are free, free, um free gain or you are free to be hit by a car if you will okay and so when you are trying to gain territory and when you are called to to go on to um territory and to bring god there the enemy is going to try to to um intimidate you because here's the thing he can't stop god but he'll do everything he can to delay to distract to deter, to discourage. He'll do everything in his power to try to do that. I can recount three times in my life to where I specifically, like I know it is, it was the devil trying to do those very things as I was embarking upon territory. See, I didn't know it at that time. Now I know, but as I was embarking upon territory, um, wanting to bring righteousness and freedom to, to people, the first time the devil tried to intimidate me and they all happened in my dreams um first and then it came out uh physically if you will but um in my dream because I was praying for this individual person and literally literally sending her messages and you know I didn't realize what I was doing at that moment now I do I was embarking upon the devil's territory he didn't like that and so in my dream, that demon, the demon that was operating in the person who attacked me, I'll tell you, came to me in my dream and said, I've been wanting to kill you ever since I met you. I've been wanting to kill you ever since I met you. Now, this happened. I had that dream after I've been praying for this person for a certain amount of time, after um, I sent this person messages and, you know, trying to get this person out of or encourage them to get them out of a certain mindset and things like that had no clue I was embarking upon the enemy's territory I didn't I didn't understand like that kind of stuff I just knew God is real his word is real you know you pray for people you encourage people now looking back at it I'm like did I have legal right to to go to this person to because I can pray for a person but did I have legal right to be going to talk to this person and you know stuff like that that's that's I'm still thinking that through but all I know is that the devil I was embarking upon a territory <clears throat> embarking up upon people's lives who were so completely surrendered or who had who had real estate in this person's body who lived in, his, in these people's bodies the family and I'm sure it probably still does um he was like nope you ain't, you ain't coming up over here. So in my dreams, the devil spoke to me. The very demon that was in that person spoke to me, came to me in my dreams because dreams are just a, it's a spiritual realm. It said, I've been wanting to kill you ever since I met you. And not maybe three, four days later, the, the attack that he was saying to me in my dream happened in real life. This person viciously, verbally attacked me.
And what he was trying to do was he was trying to kill my heart. He was trying to kill me in unforgiveness. In the dream, when he said, I've been wanting to kill you ever since I met you, he had like a AKA, like a AKA. See, that just lets you know. Okay, I don't know nothing about weapons, but he had a, a automatic weapon. Okay. And he was shooting me down, trying to shoot me down. Like bullets just raining, just ringing out, raining out, whatever. And each time the bullet came out, which was a continual line, I was jumping like a ninja. I was dodging every single bullet. So that was God showing me that the, uh, the attack is happening. It's literally happening, but it's not going to kill you. <laughs> After that dream, the enemy tried to do just that. He tried to kill me inter in, uh, internally through my heart, through unforgiveness, because that person, the devil, through that person came to attack me to get me off of that person, to get me off of that family because that was the devil's territory. The devil, see, I didn't know the the power or the authority that I would walk in now when it comes to telling the devil and casting demons out, telling them to go. He wanted no part of that. So he tried to kill me before I can come into an awareness of my authority and my power in Jesus Christ. It delayed me, but it didn't stop me. I was in unforgiveness for a number of years. But I've been since then I've been I've forgiven and I've been healed and I'm still healing from the remnants of those things. I honestly believe I am healed. God has been telling me to stop. Just because you may feel pain doesn't mean that you're not healed in that area. So I'm still learning as I grow. But I just wanted to show you how the enemy tried to intimidate me. Because I was embarking on ter upon territory. I was gaining territory and he got scared and he got nervous. Okay? That was number one. Number two. There was this man at my my uh my old job there for years. Come to find out, so he's he's engaging in in a in inappropriate ways with young women there, women that I work with. Nobody's saying anything. Come to find out, he's been on this one man team having sex with multiple people, multiple women in this job for the past sixteen plus years. Okay, do you feel me? I come up on the scene. He tried to pull, he tried to flirt with me and pull some stuff on me until I realized like what's going on and what, what this person is all about. So I decided, I said, yo, ain't nobody doing nothing. Ain't nobody saying nothing. And I'm just like, yo, it's, it's time out for stupidity like this, especially like men on the jobs harassing these women. I remember gearing up to, to file a sexual har harassment um, report or file a report on this man. And I can't remember if I got nervous, I don't, I don't know what happened, but I remember feeling the pressure. I, w I remember feeling anxiety, like, oh my goodness, I've never filed a sexual harassment suit or any on anybody. What's going to happen? All these thoughts started popping in my head. What are people going to say about me? What, how are they going to feel? God was literally strength even though these thoughts were coming god was literally strengthening me in my physical body in my mind to to bust a move because here's the thing you you gain territory by righteousness and sometimes that takes measures like calling a thing a thing and bringing law into it or bringing policy into it you got to stop evil and it takes the people of god to do that okay see i had i couldn't i couldn't just stand on what these girls were saying I had evidence myself, okay? So right before, like right when I began to get nervous, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should do this. Th that night in my dreams, that, remind you, dreams are the spiritual world. Like I'm, I've learned dreams are the, the spiritual realm. Um, the demon that was in that man came to me in my dream. Now in the dream, we were in the workplace, in that setting. The demon looked at me and said, I knew you wouldn't go tell on me. I knew I knew you wouldn't go tell on me. Proceeded to take me. He bound me up and then took me to that actual man's work area. And then took me into a dungeon, like a secret dungeon place that's not even real, I don't think. And proceeded to sexually abuse me in my dream. That next day, I filed that harassment on that dude. Because what the devil tried to do was intimidate me, to stop me from gaining territory, to stop me from trying to stop that demon from doing what he was doing, harassing these young women. That man to this day, I believe, is still at that job. 
But my file, me filing that, put it on record. So if someone else wants to file it, they'll get him up out of there. He, he should have been fired a long time ago. But that's another conversation. You know, the devil tried to intimidate me. Okay. Third, third scenario. This happened recently. I think I had maybe two sessions with this woman um, doing some inner work and deliverance. Like I was calling spirits up out of her. I think after the second session, the demon in her. Y'all, this is when I tell you the spiritual world is more real than, than, the, than the physical. The demon in her came to me in my dream. This is about, I woke up maybe about 5 a.m. or 6 something in that morning. Came to me in my dream. I remember when the dream started, I could just, I heard voices in the background. It's like they were plotting, saying, do this, do this. Okay, 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 like this. Let's hurry up, let's hurry up. I heard voices plotting. And right as I heard the voices, like I'm in the dream, I can, I can, I'm seeing out of my own eyes in the dream. I hear voices plotting. I was like in this room, I don't know. But there was this door that was open. And right as they, as they were plotting, I saw a four-legged beast. I, I first saw it through the crack, through the, you know, the, the hinged part of the door. I saw it through the crack first. And then I saw it come completely into the room through the door, growling towards me. Rawr, rawr. And as it was growling, coming towards me, I saw it like aiming for my left hand. Now, I honestly believe that's something very spiritual. I remember a, fr a good friend of mine told me the difference between the left and the right when it comes to spirituality. I can't. I ain't going to lie on this video because I don't want to lead nobody astray. But I believe maybe something was in my left hand in the spirit and I didn't even see it, didn't know it. But it was coming from my hand. And it, I, could, I, I believe it made contact with my hand. And in, my, in the dream, let me say this. I, I woke up, but I, I couldn't get up. That whole sleep paralysis thing. People say sleep paralysis is normal. Bull crap. Bull crap. When people say you're stuck in this, this consciousness, why, first off, why? Why would you want to be, like, why is that a normal, a normal thing that you're stuck? First off, you're stuck in a conscious realm, but your body is still asleep, whatever. That don't even make sense. To, to call that normal, people... What the enemy tries to do is to, is to keep him, himself silent or to keep himself underneath the radar so people won't see him for what he really is. That sleep paralysis stuff is spiritual. That was a That's demonic. It is demonic. Okay? I'm, so I'm back to this. The, the thing is growling at me. I literally wake up, but be, that demon was holding me down. In my sleep, I'm literally laying down and I can feel myself doing like this. <laughs> I could feel myself doing like this in my sleep. And I felt it on my hand, my physical hand. I felt like something, like a pressure on my physical hand while I'm doing like this. In my dream, I began to scream. Either I either I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Or I said, or I just kept saying uh, the blood of Jesus or Jesus, 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 Jesus. As I was screaming that out of my mouth in the dream, the roaring and the, the beast like it it got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it disappeared. And then I woke up. I can like I was already awake, but then my body came like I could move my body and open up my eyelids. And I just began to I was so mad. I began to rebuke, I began to pray, I began to just call whatever demon that I be, I went in. And I was like, "Okay, devil." <laughs> See because now I'm more aware of his schemes. Because I was embarking upon his territory. He'd been living in that, this woman that I'm talking about, probably since she was a, a baby, who knows, her whole life, over 30, over 35 years. It saw me coming for it and tried to come to me in, my, in the spiritual realm to intimidate me, to cause me to back up from casting it out of her. The enemy would try to intimidate you when you are embarking upon his territory. Do not fall for his, his plots, his plans. Don't allow the enemy to play you and to discourage you. I'm saying, I'm saying this because I'm going to watch this video back and watch it for myself. But I'm saying this to encourage you. I know many other people have had dreams of attacks and didn't even put two and two together that the enemy was trying to intimidate you or trying to, you know, push you back. If God has told you to go forward, if, God, if, if you are pushing forth righteousness, don't stop. 
don't stop because that's what, what the enemy wants you to do. Let me tell you, after I had that dream, I called that woman. I think it was the next day or the, the, the next day or two days later, I said, let's go. Let's, let's have another session. Hmm. And I said, <laughs> as we were about to, to cast these, cast more demons out, I said, that demon that came to me in my dreams, you was bold enough to come to me in my dreams. Be bold enough to show yourself right now. I was angry. I was like, no, you didn't try to come and intimidate me like that. And you held me down too. Oh, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. And guess what? That demon manifested. That demon was put up, put up a little fight with shaking and growling. But that demon came right on up out of her. I didn't know my power years ago. I didn't, I, when the devil said, I've been wanting to kill you ever since I met you, that demon in that, that first example I gave you, since that, that person met me when I was about five or six years old, that demon wanted to kill me at five or six years old. But I guess it was the opportune time then when I was 25, it wanted to kill me. I didn't know my power I had then, but now I know it now. And I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm, let me encourage you. Don't you let the devil back you into a corner. He ain't never, because I got the sword, because I got my arsenal, I'm aware of the weapons. And I'm only going to become even more aware of the, of the weapons that God has given his people to fight. He says, I have given you power in Luke 10, 19, to trample over snakes, scorpions, and all the powers of the evil, evil one, the devil, and nothing shall harm you. As long as I have authority in, in a, a spirit and a body that's on this earth, I'm going to, I'm going to utilize the power that God has given me to crush the devil's head i made that decision in its own its own because like god said be fruitful multiply fill the earth subdue it and have dominion righteousness is called to rule over evil as a believer in christ you are called to rule over evil so i am commanding you i'm encouraging you take territory take up territory with but you the only way you can do that is with righteousness so you're gonna have to come out of sin you're going to have to repent. You're going to have to forgive those who have hurt you bad. You're going to have to let forsake all these selfish ambitions. You're trying to erect your own kingdom. You're trying to do what you want to do. God has said, I didn't, I didn't tell you to do that. With like, he, we're, we're coming to, to, to win these souls back, to get them free from the hold of the enemy. They're, they're prisoners. They're, they're uh, bound by the enemy. And the devil's going, he's going to try to intimidate you. He's going to try to push back on you to cause you to retreat like a punk. He's going he gonna to try to cause you to retreat. Don't, don't. Stay in your ground. Stay in your ground. Allow the Holy Spirit to move you. Pray about it. Move when the Holy Spirit say move. Because there are some wars that we're just called to just pray for. There are some situations that we're just called to just pray for. And the Holy Spirit will let you know what to do. I was supposed to file that harassment report on that man. Oh, wow, you better believe I was supposed to cast that demon up out of her. No, we ain't doing that. I was supposed to be praying for that young lady that I was praying for, and I still am. Hmm. I was supposed to be doing that. Now, when I sent her a message like I did, I don't know if I was supposed to be doing that. And I'm like, God, was that was that the door to open up the the, uh, the vicious attack that I got from the enemy? Shout out to um, the late John Paul Jackson, who has a book called Needless Casualties of War, because there are some wars that when we embark upon, we are we are on territory we don't have permission to be on. Or we're going against high ranking demons in the second heaven, which we're not called to. We are we are called to do war with the demons on earth. That's in our jurisdiction, our territory. So when you're trying to go to the second heaven, you are out of order. God didn't tell you to do, to do that. And so when you do that, you invite war. You invite casualties, death, like real death and just crazy stuff. So God ain't telling us to do that. Check that book out. Get that book so we can learn how to really um, engage in warfare and how to stand our ground. But be encouraged. Don't let the devil punk you. I just wanted to share those three examples of how he tried to intimidate me. And he didn't stop me. I'm still going forward in righteousness, boom. Y'all stay encouraged. Until next time. Peace.